Right, so this is what happens when you keep toddlers inside for too long. Do you boys like to go outside? Yeah. So yeah, who wants to go outside? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Milk. No, no, no more milk. Let's go. Come on. It is a miserable day out there and it rained pretty much all weekend again. So I've got to get this lot bundled into something that resembles something waterproof. So yeah, yes, buddy, finish your milk. You're going to drink it. Um, which involves a fair bit of wrestling. But anyway, we'll get the boys out. And I'll take you to go and have a look at what John got up to at the stone house over the weekend. Has it? Not yet. Let's see if I can persuade him to get that on. Oh man, I am longing for the summer. As a person who grew up in a very warm, sunny, generally sunny anyway, country, be able to just walk out in shorts and t-shirt with a pair of flip-flops on most days when you have to bundle up and get everybody wrestled into clothes and wellies and waterproofs just exhausting so I don't I don't love European winters um but anyway we're nearly done aren't we it's basically well it's not really but it feels it did feel spring like um a couple of weeks ago now it's just kind of drippy and damp okay I think I can manage without a hood anyway it's just a bit drippy and damp so yeah here we are Mama. yes my boy what's up hello you got your digger yeah that was actually Crusoe's birthday present Mario digger, just like Mario's, but sadly, um, a snapped bit of plastic off it, so it's been abandoned by the three-year-old. But Sawyer is delighted. Hey, buddy, yeah. you got your digger. Yeah. Good boy. Right, let's see how our new chickens are doing, everybody. They've actually settled in really nicely. Um, I don't know where you left it, buddy. They're all looking a bit bedraggled and fed up with the weather. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We haven't been brave enough to let them out and roam yet. Um, and I don't know that we will. I mean, I'd like to for their sake. It's such a nice way for them to live, isn't it? But um, after what happened, we're feeling a little bit sensitive about it. And these chickens don't seem to be that bothered. You know, the other lot used to run up and down the fence, I suppose, because they were used to it. Um, all day long, they would pace the fence wanting to be let out. Or if we walked up here, they were just beside themselves. These guys are not bothered at all. So, um, keep looking, buddy. It'll be somewhere. Anyway, so we'll see how we go. In an ideal world, they're free range, isn't it? Because that makes me happy to think of what the life that we could give them. But if they're happy and they look like they've settled and have enough space, then maybe it's not a risk worth taking. That's a good boy, Jongies. And finally, after about four nights of having to wrestle the guinea fowl into the coop, they now go in on their own. <laughs> so our Chikosi door is back in action and everybody's happy. Oh gosh, we found a paddle. Does that feel nice or yeah? Is it? Buddy, you were digging by the house yesterday. I think it's probably there. Anyway, onto the stone house renovation. We've hit something of a really like key moment in the build. Yesterday was a really stressful day. John was laying the foundations for the extension um, and it was pretty intense. His mind was going in overdrive. He was trying really hard to figure out a lot of things, which I'll explain to you in a second. Um, but it's like, he's never done anything like this before. He's never built a building. He doesn't know how to lay foundations. He's never done that before. I 100% trust John's judgment and he has spent hours researching, reading, learning. Um, but there's a big difference, isn't there, between kind of spending the time reading and researching and then implementing and actually having to do it. Um, so I think yesterday he was trying to put into practice all the things he's kind of come across that he thinks are relevant and that he thinks are fitting to our project. But each project is so unique and this one in particular is complex because it's got cement 
where foundations need to sit. It's also got granite where foundations need to sit. It's all uneven. It's hard to dig out with the tools that we've got. We can't find the tools that we would make life a little bit easier. Um, but anyway, he managed. He got the foundations in. And then, of course, it started raining last night and it hasn't stopped. So he has covered them up. I'll show you now. We'll wander up there at Sawyer's Bay. So we're not in any great hurry. But um, he covered it all up. So hopefully the cement's gone off okay and it's all set okay. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a real pivotal moment. So today we are back at it. You still can't find it. Chris is desperately looking for his budzer. Where's your budzer, buddy? Where did you have it yesterday? Um, maybe I'm in the house again. Yeah. Next to Dad. Mhm. Mm I get in a chair. Okay. Oh, that's it. I remember. You're right. You pushed the chair over the edge, so you had to stop digging to go and fetch the chair. That's right, buddy. Good remembering. Where's it gone? Huh. So do you think you left it up at the tiny house, or did you bring it down with you when you came to get the chair? Can you try remember? I bring you down a chair yesterday. Okay. Let's have a look. It's such a funny moment yesterday afternoon. I came out of the tiny house having done some work, and the boys had been playing outside with John. And the chair that's up there had tumbled down the hill. So that's one of Chris's favourite things, lobbing stuff off edges. So I said to him, how did the chair get down there, buddy? And straight without missing a beat, he said, the fox did it. The fox came and pushed it off the edge. <laughs> Toddlers make me laugh a lot. Anyway, I'm amazed that he's remembering. Yeah, you were digging that out yesterday. This is amazing, watching him kind of retrace his steps. Um, yesterday afternoon and figuring out where he left his buds. It's not something he's done before. It's amazing growing tiny people, isn't it? It just blows my mind. Maybe you left it up at the tiny house before you came down to get the chair. Have you looked up there? No. Okay, well, should we put your rain jacket on so that you stay nice and dry while you're looking? Crusoe is learning a pretty valuable nope. lesson here about how to look after your things. And one of the things that I don't think we take seriously enough as grown-ups is our online security in a rapidly changing online world, which is why we always turn to Surfshark as our VPN and we wouldn't be without it. A VPN basically masks all of the information that you put into the internet and encrypts it so that nobody can access it. Things like your bank account details, your personal data, or what you're up to online. Surfshark is our favorite because you can have one subscription on all of your devices. So I've got it on my phone, John's got it on his, we've got it on our iPad and on our computer. And it protects us no matter where we are. If we're using public Wi-Fi, which is often a weak spot for security, everything is encrypted and no one has access to anything. They've got servers in over 3,200 countries. So you can change your IP address, which often means that you'll be able to access your favorite TV shows when you're traveling or access different pricing, depending on where your IP address is. So you can get the best deals on things like flights and hotels. And well, I just think we should all be taking it really, really seriously. So please use the link in our description below and our offer code, the newbies, you'll get 80% off and up to three months for free. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So there is absolutely no risk to giving it a go. Let's go have a look at those foundations. Whoa, look at this place, hey? That is a lot of water. So here's the work from yesterday. The foundations are laid for the front wall and half of the back wall. Yeah, no, 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 don't stand on it. Remember, don't touch anything, okay? Because dad's hard at work, yeah? I did that yesterday, I saw you. Okay. Then I saw you bang this straight down. Okay. Now it's Okay, buddy, I'll come get you now. It's gone, eh? Oh, man. Maybe when dad gets back from the shops, we'll ask him, okay? Okay, so here we are at the project site. And this is what we've done, or what John's done. I didn't really help this at all. I was looking after the kids. But basically, it's a really complex thing to try and get right. Because not only... Well, there's, there's three levels of level that he needs to get right with the foundation. They've got to be flush with the wall and 90 degrees to the wall that we're building from. They've got to be level this way so that they... Is this right? Yeah. So they've got to be flush with the wall, they've got to be level that way, and they've got to be level this way, so that when we build on top of them, everything we build on top of them is straight. You don't want to obviously have leaning walls. The other thing that we're dealing with is that this is a temporary structure. You know, we're, we're not building something that probably will be allowed to stay here forever. 
but at the same time we may have to live in here for two and a half years so we're trying to build something that is not only secure and stable and strong but also damp proof warm cozy and um, comfortable big enough so um there's a lot going on in our minds about how to do this properly and john is trying so hard okay sweetie we're going to keep looking i promise um, and John is trying so hard to get it right and to strike that balance. And then from here, it's built up, which is really exciting. So this bit, we kind of, like, I feel like it just needs, we just need to get through it. Um, but it's also thrown up a whole bunch of other questions about the other parts of the house and about whether or not we're going to have enough space when we're done with it all. I am really struggling at the moment with the lack of space we have for our family. Um, so anyway, what it's made us think is like, right, how can we get more space? How do we make a temporary structure feel permanent and be permanent, but not permanent? Um, what do we need to do to make sure that living in this house for probably two to three years is going to be enjoyable and comfortable and doable and not drive us completely crazy and force us off our farm? We've got a couple of ideas. Every time somebody walks through this door, they hit their head. It's a really little door. Now, I'm not a very tall person, but even I, need to duck to get in here so anybody taller than me inevitably whacks their head which is no good so john's plan is and it's a massive job and a real pain in the bum but dig out this step and dig out the entire kitchen and lower the floor by 15 centimeters so that we don't have to duck when we walk through the door but also it will give us a feeling of a lot more space in that room because it's really pokey and dark and that is our only kitchen space so that's going to happen, which is a bit kind of crazy. Building your own home and, and building from scratch and, and building with no building, like formal building experience is like this, isn't it? Like the project goes in a direction, you change course, you come up with new ideas, you test things, they work, they don't work. You realise things need to be done that you didn't think needed to be done. And basically this project is just turning into something a lot bigger than we thought it was going to be. Um, but we've got to do this house properly. I think the next thing we're gonna do is completely gut it and then start again, you know? Rewire, re-plumb. We've, we've bought radon testers. We're trying to put damp proof courses in. We're gonna maybe look at underfloor heating in the kitchen and just really do it properly, basically, and not fudge it because we don't know how long we're gonna be living in there for. And if we haven't done it properly, um, it's gonna be a real pain. <laughs> right, let me go and find this budzer. Um, and then when John gets back from the shops, he's gone off to go and get, um, I think he's got getting damp proof courses and more sand from Mario and various bits and pieces um, to carry on with the building today. So as soon as he gets back, we'll crack on. Um, but for now, duty calls. Crusoe, where did you leave your buds? Yeah, you were digging that big hole there. Hmm. Hmm. What's that? Okay, you're tracking yourself, are you? Um, I did up there and saw you yesterday. Okay. I put it in there. Right. And it's just disappeared on. It's just disappeared Buddy, I think we've got to wait for Dad and ask him when he gets back because he'll know. Oh, Maybe Dad's, Dad's put it somewhere. Let's go down there and check. Okay, do you want your rain jacket? I'm good. You're good, okay. What? Right. Oh, really? He took it inside when you were making supper. You're right, buddy. I remember now. Dad took it away from him, didn't he? So where did Daddy put it? Because remember, Sawyer was crying when you came in for supper because Dad took it away. So we need to wait for Daddy to come and tell us where he put it. Hey. Maybe it's on the shelf. I looked on the shelf, big boy. I didn't see it. I want to check. I want to check, Mama. Okay, you go check. I can't see it. Hmm. We'll have to wait for Dad. Okay, let's wait here because he'll be coming soon. You want it, you want it. We found it! After all that, eh? Right, there we go. Abba. Good morning. Oh, man. 
it rained a whole bunch last night. You know, perfect timing, of course. Just put down a whole load of cement that you want to dry. And the rain comes. Water, water everywhere. Yeah, it's dry, and it always oh, feeling a bit soft, but yeah, it's not dry, dry. Okay, that was quite wet to start off with. Okay, well, anyway, I think the foundations are going to be dry enough. I hope they are, anyway. That's a lot of rain. So our new house floods. Goes right now. <laughs> There's a lot to do. Now, oh, love, with my limited experience, I have to tell you that they look very snazzy. So they look all right. Yeah, today. they look great. Hopefully. I'm going to dry well today. Mm -hmm. So, um, here's the thing. We can't do very much more in terms of putting down foundations today okay um, and the reason for that is um we're waiting for mario to come with some more sand uh so, and you know we used so much cement yesterday so much more than i thought we were going to use um because these are pretty deep foundations and it's all cement in there so it's it's like there's a lot of cement down there so we wait now. It was a pretty stressful day yesterday, um, getting that all square and in line, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy with how it is. It's level, I um, mean, it's straight, and I think we've got a good right angle up there as well. So, um, you know, we're good to go. So what is the plan today? You know, the, the, right, the, order, the right order of things, of course, is to do the foundations all of them and finish it before you move on um, but there's two reasons why i don't want to do that the first is of course we're, we're waiting for mario to bring some more sand um, and the second reason is i've ordered from the uk a radon membrane um, that's basically a plastic sheet that goes across the bottom of any foundations like a damp proof course would do um, and i really I, I kind of want to put that down first and underneath the foundations as well. I think that that would work well. So if like me, you don't know what radon is, I do now, but if you don't know what that is, it's a gas that is released from rock, granite, right? Well, from any rock. From any yeah. rock. So it's a gas, sorry, I've got to get my face in the sun. That's so glorious. <laughs> Hmm. Anyway, think... it's a gas that's released from rock that is poisonous. And if you live with it for an extended period of time, it does cause cancer. So you don't want it sort of seeping into your house. In the UK, it's something that they check for in house surveys. When you're purchasing a new house, they check the area that your house is in to make sure that it's a, or to kind of give you a, an idea of what sort of radon levels you can expect in your home. And if it's an area with high radon, then of course you'd want to investigate further in your house. We found it really difficult to source anything to stop radon or to kind of um, mitigate any radon factors that we've got here in Portugal. So we've actually ordered that plastic to come from the UK and it should be here in hopefully a couple of weeks. No, 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 this week. Is it? No. Oh, okay, should yeah, be yeah. here it's this week. On, uh, yeah, this week. This week, okay, cool. So on that's Wednesday good. But Thursday. we did buy a radon meter as well. So we're gonna put that up in the house and we'll let you know what kind of results we get. Be interesting. Yeah, it, you know what? It's really funny what having kids would do to you because <laughs> if I didn't have Crusoe and Sawyer, I'd, you know, I never, I, I've bought a couple of houses in the UK before, um, obviously sold as well. And, and you know, you get that radon survey. It's the last thing you look at, look at in the survey. Um, but now you've got kids, you start thinking about stuff like that. So yeah. I want to make And we sure are on a bit of like, a, as you would have seen in a, a recent video of ours, we are on a bit of like a expel toxins and yeah, consciously trying to expel as many toxins as we can from our life kind of kick. So yeah. 
radon plastics. <laughs> John's not loving it. So what we're going to do today um, is I've just popped to the shops this morning. So I've bought a damp proof course. I've bought some pressure treated wood as well. That'll be the first two layers of the of the wooden frame of the house. Um, and I've got, of course, a whole bunch of wood um, that we bought for this project waiting to be used. So I think it would be quite good fun um, for me personally anyway, to build something out of wood because I like to do that. Um, and also just to get a feel for the structure, how it's going to look when it starts to come together. Um, and then we'll, you know, like, like I said, we'll wait a little bit to do the rest of the foundations. Unorthodox, yes, I'm sorry, Bob. Um, not the right order of doing things. Totally agreed, Frank. Um, but we're, we're working with what we've got. We're doing it in the order and the pace that we can do it at. Um, and hopefully it's just going to be an enjoyable project, even though this is the first time we've ever built a project quite like this. Um, and it can be stressful. So let's try and mitigate that stress. Thirty centimeters worth of. Oh. 